Hey guys, this is Zach. Welcome to chapter 5.1, Composite Functions. So a composite function is like, it's a, it's a function inside of a function. So you can think of it if you have f of x as a function, a composite function would be f of g of x, if g of x is another function. So the way they write this, you can either write it like this, or another way you'll see it is f and then this little circle and then g and then x here looks like fog it's um so that's the same thing as f of g of x so to solve these problems if you have f of g of x to solve it you first have to find g of x so if it just gives you like um Let's say it gives it to you in just um, not like a concrete example form. So if it says f of x equals x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared, for example. And they say find f of g of x. What you're going to do is you're going to rewrite it to f and then instead of writing g of x here, you're going to write what g of x actually is, which is x squared. So that's f of x squared. And now you can see that f of x is just x plus 1, and this is your new x, so you're going to write x squared plus 1. Wherever you see x is in this equation, you're going to substitute with whatever g of x is, which in this case is x squared. So you'd get x squared plus 1. If it asked you the other way, if it said g of f of x, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to write g, and then f of x is x plus 1, so g of x plus 1 equals and then g is x squared so plug in this for x x plus 1 squared so now let's do a more concrete example so let's say the problem goes f of x equals 3x to the third minus 2x plus 1 that's your function for f of x and then it'll say g of x equals 10x minus 3 and so your problem will be like, um, find f of g of 2. And then, um, so, you know, follow your same steps. So the first step, we'll rewrite it so it's a little bit easier. f of g of 2. So what you do here, remember, solve for the inside first. So what is g of 2? So you're going to write f and then find g of 2. If you go up here, g of 2, you're going to plug in 2 for x. So 10 times x is 2 minus 3. So 20 minus 3, 17. So now you're going to plug in 17 for this. Now you're going to go down the next line, f of 17. So f of 17 is going to be, every time you see an x, here's your f of x. Every time you see an x, you're going to plug in 17. It's your new x. So 3... 17 to the third minus 2 times 17 plus 1. You guys can do the math there. You just use a calculator. It's going to be a pretty big number. Um, but this works out to be 14,706. So that's the first step in solving with that you're going to be doing with composite functions is actually solving like an f of g of x. So the next thing you're going to want to do is going to be the domain. The domain for these is a little harder. So there's, there's four main steps that you're going to do that I kind of wrote out. And this is the book kind of gets confused when they explain it. But this is, base, this is going to be your basic steps. Step one, take inner function and find domain. So if you have f of g of x, like we've been doing, you're going to want to find the domain of g of x, the inner function, whatever the second letter is. Yeah, so find the domain of g of x. Step two, you're going to want to find the domain of the outer function. So in this case, it's going to be f of x. So this is where it gets a little confusing. So you have both the domains of g of x and f of x. So for step three, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set Step two, so the domain of f of x uh, equal to the inner function. So 
whatever whatever answer you get here in step two, um, say it's um, like say this was like x cannot equal five. You're gonna set here. You're gonna say five equals, and you're gonna set it equal to the inner function. So five equals g of x, and then you're gonna write out the function of g of x. Maybe g of x is like x squared plus one. I don't know, and then you'd solve for x. Then lastly, step four is combining your answers from part one, from part one and part three. So, and that's gonna be your domain. Um, so in this case, it would be um, whatever x equals at this step and whatever the domain is at this step. So I'm, next I'm going to explain why this is. So let's, let's look at the function. You have f of g of x, right? And your two components that are going to make up your domain are going to be, one, the domain of g of x. And then secondly, it's going to be um, what values of x give you the domain of f of x. So let's look at let's an example. I think that's the best way to show this because otherwise it gets a little confusing. But um, one way to write it before I move on would be that the f of x domain has to equal g of x. So if you, let's say the f of x domain, um, if you have the function f of x, and that's like 3 over x minus 1. We know the denominator can't equal 0, so we know the domain is x cannot equal 1. Right? So x cannot equal 1. So that's the domain of f of x. So we'd say 1, which is that, has to equal g of x. And let's say g of x, the function, has to be... Um, or is, um, let's say, x plus 4. That's your function g of x. You set it equal to the domain of f of x. So we subtract 4 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 3. So that's the second component of your domain. Now, in this case, since this has no domain, it's all real numbers, your domain for this problem would be just x cannot equal negative 3. So that would be it. So why is this? Why do you have to set this equal to, why do you have to set your f of x domain equal to g of x? And the answer is because when you're finding the domain of f of x, you're not working with f of x, you're working with f, f of g of x. So when you're setting the domain, it's for this value in here. So this value is going to be transformed when you plug it into g of x, and then it's going to affect f of x, if that makes sense. So when you say that f of x cannot equal 1, what values of g of x are going to give you 1, right? Normally we'd say what values of x are going to give you 1. But since this is g of x in here, it has to be what values of g of x are going to give me 1. And that's why we set 1 equal to g of x. And we can say when x equals negative 3, when I plug negative 3 into g of x, it will give me 1. So when x equals negative 3, I'm going to get f of 1. And that can't work because we said up here it doesn't fit into the domain. So that's a little conceptual. Let me do, let me do one more problem to try to explain that better. So f of x equals... 4 over x minus 5. And let's say g of x, your other function, equals 20x over x plus 3. So these are two functions. And the question is going to ask you, what is the domain of f of g of x? So here we just have to follow our four steps. So step one is find the domain of the inner function, which is, in this case, g of x. So 20x over x plus 3. This cannot equal 0, so you're going to say x plus 3 cannot equal 0. x cannot equal negative 3. So that's your inner domain. Step two is find the outer domain, which is f of x. So 4 over x minus 5, 
Denominator cannot equal 0, so x minus 5 cannot equal 0, x cannot equal 5. There's your outer function, domain. Step 3 is set step 2 equal to g of x, your inner function. So, so what we would do is we'd set this x is cannot equal 5, so we're going to say 5 equals and then g of x, which I erased, but which is 20x over x plus 3. So now here you just have to solve for x. You get 5x plus 15 equals 20x. I just multiplied this into that. And then combine like terms, so I'm going to subtract the 5x minus 5x. 15 equals 15, 15x. Divide by 15, divide by 15, x equals 1. And then step 4 is combine your answers from part 1 and from part 3, and that's your domain. So the domain of f of g of x is x such that x, let's see, go to part 1, x cannot equal negative 3, and then go to part 3, x cannot equal 1. So this is your answer. So this makes sense. Let's look at it. You have f of g of x. The first thing we looked at was our inner function g of x. And we said at the beginning, since this is your g of x function, the domain of it is x cannot equal negative 3. So we wrote that here. x can't equal negative 3 for g of x. But you also have to incorporate f of x. So here's your function for f of x. And f of x doesn't work when x equals 5. So x cannot equal 5. However, it's not written f of x, where we could just say x cannot equal 5. We can't do that because you have g of x in the middle. So we have to say g of x equals 5, cannot, or g of x cannot equal 5, rather than x equals 5, or cannot equal 5. So that's why we do this. We set what it has to be equal to g of x rather than just x because it is a composite function. We do have this in the middle. So therefore, after doing all this math, we can find out that when x equals 1, g of x is going to equal 5. When x equals 1 here, this is going to turn out to be 5. And when g of x is 5, that's the domain of f of x. f, cannot, f of x does not work when x equals 5. So then we add this 1 over here in the domain. So it can't equal negative 3 or 1. The next thing we're going to talk about is components. That's the third part of the section. So components are the different parts that make up um, f of g of x. So for these problems, you'll get, you'll get a question like f of g equals h. And then it'll also tell you h of x equals x squared plus 1 raised to the 50th. It's a squared. Um, and then it'll say find the components f of x and g of x. So we, uh, you have multiple options for this. There's multiple ways it can turn out to come out to this. So, you know, for first of all, it could be... Um, Let's say we could say g of x equals x squared plus 1, right, your inner function, and then f of x equals x raised to the 50th. And then when we combine them, f of g of x, we get f of x squared plus 1, and then we take our function f of x. Every time we see x, we plug in this. So x squared plus 1 raised to the 50th. And that's the same thing as this. So that's one option. There is another option, if you can see this. Um, you kind of just have to think about it. There's no really method to this. You can just see that you have to get x squared plus 1 raised to the 50 in the end. So um, another way we could do it is f of x equals x squared. And your inner function, g of x, is going to be x squared plus 1 to the 25th. And then when you do f of g of x, you do f of, and then plug in g of x, 
which is x squared plus 1 to the 25th. And then you take your function, f of x, everywhere you see x, you plug in the middle, or the inner thing. So here we're going to put, for x squared, we're going to put x squared plus 1 to the 25th. And then here we square it. Squared. You multiply the exponents together, and you get x squared plus 1 to the 50th. So that's a little bit more complicated than the first one, or that's a little more hard to see. But, um, yeah, for these problems, you kind of just have to, to play around with it. Um, but, you know, you can you just know that whatever your inner function is, you just have to um, plug that in for x up here. So, you know, the, the, the way I would look at it was think, oh, when you see h of x, has to equal x squared plus 1 to the 50th. I would think outer and inner, so I would set g of x equal to that, and then f of x would just be your inner to the 50th, which is what we did in example 1. So let's do another one. Maybe you'll see this one a little bit better. Um, we say f of g has to equal h, and then we're going to say h of x equals 1 over x plus 1. So, and then it'll say what are the components for this. So, let's look at what this function really is. This is just like a different form of 1 over x. So let's call the main function, your outer function, which is f of x, let's call it 1 over x. And then you can see here there's a little substitution, it's x plus 1. So we can call the inner function x plus 1. And when we write f of g of x, you're going to get f of x plus 1. So you're going to plug in x plus 1 for x, and you're going to get 1 over x plus 1. So for this one, I just thought of a simple way to write this, which is just 1 over x. And then you can see the denominator is actually x plus 1. So for our inner function, we can plug in whatever we want for x. If this was 1 over x squared plus 30 or something, we could still write f of x is 1 over x. And then for g of x, we would just set it equal to x squared plus 30. And then when you do all the substitution in here, this would be x squared plus 30, and then this would be 1 over x squared plus 30 on the bottom, and you get this. So this problem is a little bit more straightforward than the other one, but you kind of just have to see it. Find your main function on the outside, and then all these little changes, like instead of x, it's x squared plus 30. Deal with that in g of x. So that's it for chapter 5.1. Um, We'll have another practice problem where we'll go through all of these all in one problem. Uh, we'll do that in the next video. So if you, need, if you don't get it yet or you think you might need a little extra practice, tune in to 5.1 practice problems. And then we'll see you for chapter 5.2, which is dealing with inverse functions.